Hello everyone. So I wanted to hop on today and make a short little video about what it's like to give Reiki. It's so weird because I just started these videos and I have to look at the camera and I'm trying to like train my eyes because technically that means I'm looking at all of you. And it's so hard to do that because I want to look this way. I want to look like this at the camera. <laughs> but really, you guys are right here. So, today's video, I wanted to do a little sit down about what's been happening lately. And, um, you know, life has been busy. This morning I had just a really busy morning, and I don't know, these video diaries on YouTube are going to be interesting, <laughs> but today I wanted to talk about what it feels like to give someone Reiki as a healer. A lot of healers talk about what it's going to be like to receive Reiki, what Reiki is, but nobody really talks about, you know, what it feels like to give of your energy and some of the physical side effects we potentially could have, or at least maybe I have, maybe I'm doing, maybe I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> but one of the first things that I want to talk about is whenever you feel like you are vibrating so high and if you've ever done any energy work then you know what that feels like you know what that feels like it's like your whole body is tingling and to me it kind of feels like you're high but like you're not high like a runner's high is a great analogy I could give it um, because the more and more you flex your psychic muscles the more and more you become comfortable with giving Reiki and that's why like I always suggest to my clients who I Reiki certify that it's like super important to First, start, if you're going to be doing Reiki, like, do Reiki on yourself first, number one. Number two, um, Reiki everything you can. There is nothing wrong with that. I use Reiki energy with my food. Whenever I'm cooking, I use Reiki to, like, relend my coffee with my elixirs. Anything and everything is spiritual, and I feel like that's what a lot of people tend to forget. And so the, the good thing is that just because anything and everything is spiritual doesn't mean that you can't be always flexing your psychic muscles, especially if you're in the terms of I want to, like one of your 2020 goals is to be a Reiki practitioner. And I'm a Reiki practitioner, but I have yet to, like, attune people. So that's going to be a whole other thing once I get there. But whenever you're giving Reiki to a client, like, that's there's a lot of things that you're taking on of somebody else. Their, their energy, their kind of bullshit, um, their feelings, their self-worth all of it, right? And whenever you receive Reiki as the client, you could feel like you have extreme headaches, you can feel tingling, numbness, you can have super intense dreams. All of these things can happen. But as the healer, sometimes we just feel wiped out, right? Like we feel washed out, like we're getting sick. Some people even get sick. And while that is horrible, um, there are ways, natural ways to avoid that kind of, um, I call it kind of like Reiki burnout. Like you have exuded so much of your energy that you just can't keep up anymore. 
And so one of the ways in which to do that is to utilize crystals. And I love utilizing smoky quartz to help me keep grounded. A lot of people sometimes also use garnet, but you don't have to. You can use an abundance of different crystals. But another good thing is what helps work the energy and move the energy is to stay hydrated. And so that's why I always tell my clients, especially my clients on their end, to stay hydrated because then like a truly very sensitive person might not feel the effects as hard if they're staying hydrated and kind of relaxed and just kind of just very open to receive. Where we go into trouble is where clients try to fight things or they have um, just not necessarily a lot of questions, but just areas in which they're like, I don't know what I'm doing, what I'm experiencing, this shit is crazy, and it's not crazy, they're not crazy, you're not crazy, it's just you were vibrating so high that it's going to take a little bit for your client and for you to adjust. So in order to not have a client burnout or a client that has like a million questions about Reiki energy, which has totally happened to me, by the way. I just felt like I was super unprepared. Um, the best way to go about that is drink your water, use your crystals, even practice if you need extra grounding to keep from having like these body feels. And I even perform the Reiki ceremonies outside. I think that would be way more helpful. Um, another thing as a healer is to make sure you are merged with your spirit guides. Have a spirit guide for Reiki. And um, you should definitely have a connection to who your spirit guides are if you are giving somebody Reiki because they can definitely come through in a Reiki session and either give you direction on the client about what type of energetic healing work they need most or they can actually block you from trying to heal your client, which has happened to me where they're like kind of, you know, bouncers in a sense and they show up and they're like, hey, what are you doing here? And you have to sometimes you have questions you have to answer where you're like hey I'm here to help your person like we're all on the same team it's all gonna be fine like don't worry about it um but always like please do that in the most respectful manner <laughs> but yeah so I hope you enjoyed these tips on Reiki and energy healing and I will see you guys in my next video